Hi guys, my name is Rob Dunn. A lot of you might be familiar with me in the community, the Spiceworks community. Um, either you've uh, downloaded a plugin of mine or you've uh, used a script that I've put together or a how-to or you've interacted with me somewhere. Um, hopefully it was good. I know not all of them are good, but anyway. Um, I've been around since uh, 2007 in the Spiceworks community back when the application was at version 1.2. And ever since then, I've, I've tried to put out um, as much information as I can with regards to Active Directory or scripting or, or Spiceworks types of things, um, just because I like to share information and I have myself taken uh, advantage of a lot of uh, free and open source things over the years, so I feel that this is my way of giving back uh, to the, the internet at large. Anyway, uh, why this video today? Well, basically, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about a plugin that I have put out for the newer style help desk, which is uh, called Subcategories XML. This particular plugin grants you the capabilities of creating a submenu structure to help categorize your tickets. The built-in category that Spiceworks gives you as a standard attribute is only one layer deep. So basically you have just a sim uh, simple single option to categorize your tickets. Now here we, we have the new V2 help desk view. Um, this is new as of like 7.1, 7.0, I can't remember exactly. Um, but basically it, you see here everything's pretty dynamic. You can you know, click on your tickets here and the information updates almost immediately which is pretty awesome. Down below we have what's called the, the ribbon and you'll see here that we do have an attribute called category and this is where your your categories obviously are stashed but as, as you can see it's just like one layer there's nothing more you can do here. Now with that being said you can add uh, custom attributes of your own to help granularly uh, you know, categorize and do things with your tickets. However, they're not sensitive to each other in that you select one category in this section and then another category shows up somewhere else. So the, the, that was kind of the impetus for the, the need for the subcategories plugin. Now with that all being said, there have been subcategories plugins developed for the prior version of the help desk. Um, however, nobody really <laughs> updated theirs, so I got kind of impatient and I wrote my, my own, which is a little bit different, so um, thus the video. Close out of our chats here, we don't want to chat with anybody. Okay, so first thing we need to do is, we need I just need to show you exactly where these categories are stored, and that's in your application settings, and so we need to get to your application settings. So at the very top here, we, you see we have a number of links. You see you do have a settings link, but actually if you're on the help desk page, which we are here, the settings link will actually take you to the help desk settings specifically, you know, for help desk. So we need to get back out to the main application in order to get to the application settings. So the easiest way is to either hit the dashboard link or to hit the Spiceworks link at the top. Let's just hit dashboard. Now we're at the dashboard, we see all the nifty little widgets and everything that uh, are here and we click on settings and you have your entire uh, section here filled with all sorts of settings and configuration options. Since we're looking at categories uh, or the uh, attributes built into the application we need to go into advanced and international options and you'll see here we have two sections. If you don't see these sections, it is because your uh, system is performing a network scan. So if you stop the network scan from occurring, you can do that by going into the, um, the application settings, which, which is back a page, and clicking on the network scan and stopping it from there. Or typically there's a link up here at the top. It'll say like, scan is currently running. Click here for more details. You click there and you can stop the scan. Once you do that, you can come back to this page and then you can see all of your attributes listed here. Now, again, you've got two sections here. You've got standard attributes. These are the built-in attributes that Spiceworks gives you out of the box. And then down below, you have custom attributes. These are attributes that you can create and utilize for your own installation. You'll notice here we have category, which is a list attribute. And we have two entries here, maintenance and user support. Note the comma at the beginning. That basically means that the, the option that comes up as default is going to be blank and that's why that's there. And then you have your other two here. You'll notice that it is applying only to tickets and you have a checkbox here that says, I want to show this attribute in the user portal. So this is important to note. 
All right, and then it's also important to note that we have these custom attributes down below. Those are going to come in in a minute here. Pretty uh, important stuff. All right, so what we need to do first now is we need to install the subcategories XML plugin. And the way to do that is we got to go back a page, go back to our settings, and you'll see that we have a manage apps link. Click on that, and you see we have a couple applications that are installed. Uh, the term application and plugin at the moment is kind of um, synonymous with each other so that w if I do happen to say plugin I mean application and application vice versa I mean plugin um, there's kind of a paradigm shift oh I used a buzzword um, in the terminology used here so uh, Spiceworks will start referring to these as applications okay so we need to add an application let's do that click on the add down below it brings you to the app center and then we're going to perform a search for subcategories. I have it here already. Super. And we're going to hit search. And thankfully, for the sake of this video, I'm at the top of the pile here as far as uh, the subcategory. Nobody else has come up with subcategories, XML, Super Duper Plus. So here it is. We'll click on the link to give us some more details about the plugin. And you can see my, my author picture. It's, it totally looks like a you know about Rob Dunn picture at the back of a novel or something like that um, <clears throat> anyway so you have a, an option here to install you've got uh, some information about the ratings um, and the version right now we're at 1.0 as of March 29th 2015 and you have down below a description this is all stuff that I put together you're gonna find out that most plugins aren't like this they're not gonna be that fully documented screenshots the whole deal down below more screenshots uh, and ratings and reviews all right so um, another thing to note here is that there's a see all link sometimes um, if you're on an older version of the help desk you can go in here and you can show all the prior versions I was a busy little beaver at the beginning of all this I apologize um, and then you'll see the latest version that's approved will have will be here at the top and it'll say that it's approved so we're going to go ahead and click install and this is the server that we're going to install it to which is correct and down below you're going to see this compatible with Spiceworks version blah 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 that means when I wrote this plugin that is the version that I used to develop the plugin and what that means is that if you have anything lower than that you're not going to be able to install this plugin that's very important to keep in mind click install take us back to the application view and we're going to click on settings now it's important here that uh, there are some additional options things that we have to do not options but things we have to do here I'm gonna go back a page I'm gonna we're gonna take a look at the documentation okay we've got setup part one two and then it talks about some attributes here and set up part three and it talks about the menu structure all right okay so part one, not totally important, uh, really, because we can we can do without this step, honestly. Uh, but basically, what it's telling you is that step one is telling you to go into your attributes and take a look at the existing categories that you have set up on your system. Let's create a new tab. Have a look back at our settings, and I'll show you what I mean. Advanced and international options and category so they're talking about uh, the document documentation is talking about this so we'll just copy this just for the heck of it okay all right we're going to get a list of our attributes we're going to go back to our settings all right we're going to keep these handy we're just going to we're just going to keep them handy in notepad All right. Okay. Step two, custom attributes. We have to make the custom attributes where our menu selections are stored. All right. So it's telling us we need to go to our app settings, advanced and international options again, and we're going to create four custom ticket string attributes and they have to be named exactly like these. Don't name them after Microsoft office. Don't name them, you know, ERP system whatever they have to be named first subcat 
second subcat, third subcat, fourth subcat, and they have to be text. They have to apply to tickets, and uh, yes, I would pop them in the portal. All right, with all that known, let's go back another page. Advanced International Options. Here we go. Subcat. I'm going to copy this text right here. We're going to go Ticket, Portal, Save, Add. Ticket, Portal, Save, Add. You get the idea. Okay, they are created. These are super important to have. If you don't have these, the plugin's not going to work. All right. Okay, we've got these created. We're going to go down to Setup Part 3, the menu structure. All right, so what it's saying is, you know, remember when you got your list of categories in Step 1. Let's add each one as a category at the first level. All right, uh, let's just copy this XML. The XML has to look like this. It has to have root. You'll see that there's a closing tag. There's category. There's a closing tag for category. You have to have all these in order for the menu to work. Okay, so we're going to copy this. And then we're going to go back over here to our advanced. We're going to go back a page. With application settings, we're going to go into manage apps. We're going to go into settings. We're going to right click. And we're going to paste. We're going to expand that out. Okay, so here's the here's a kind of a generic menu structure. Let's go to our notepad. We've got maintenance, we've got end user support. Let's add those two categories. No, actually, let's just add one. Let's add maintenance. Okay, this is going to be at the root. Category show equals. I'll tell you about this all in a minute. How the show uh, attribute works. Okay, we're just going to make one category called maintenance. We're actually going to leave end user support out, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay, let's talk real briefly about these attributes up here. Okay, now the maintenance and end user support here came from the category attribute given to you by Spiceworks. That is considered to be a legacy category or set of legacy categories. And you have a couple options here that refer to this. So basically what we're saying here to the plugin, we're going to say, do you as the plugin, do you want to show the legacy categories that were already configured with Spiceworks? Let's click that checkbox. Yes, we do. Up above you see another one called Prune Legacy Menu. You can check this and what if you do, it will remove entries from the Legacy Menu option into the XML tree and I'll show you what, what I mean here in a minute log subcategory changes as private notes. Basically, if you enable this, this will tell you the uh, help desk system to log an entry as a private note whenever you change to a different category. Okay. All right. So let's go up here. I'm going to hold my control key down when I click on help desk to open a new tab. Okay. All right. First, before we see anything, you notice we see nothing here. We see ticket category unspecified, no menu option, and more notably, no category attribute. Well, why is that? Well, it's because back here on the Manage Apps, we have not saved any of this yet. So let's go ahead and save this. Okay, it collapsed the settings. We're going to go back here. We're going to refresh the page. And now you see we have menu options. Super. And you see you have a legacy categories. We have maintenance, and we also have maintenance under here. What's that all about? Well, that was when I was talking about this other option here, prune legacy menus. So if you go back, if you have maintenance here and you also have maintenance up here, why do we need to have it here? Clicking this option will remove that from this menu and now it will just be here. So now when you select this, you'll see the category updates here. If 
we refresh the page, the category comes back, everything is fine and dandy. Now, what about the original category attribute, you might be wondering. Up at the top here, and this, this is the ticket, uh, ticket pane, um, you have the capability, if you click on this gear, to show other columns. One of them is category, and you'll see the actually you have these other ones that we created will also show up. Let's hit category. You'll notice that it says hardware. Down here it says hardware. We select maintenance, and now it says maintenance. Well, what was the four custom attributes? What were they for? Well, basically, the purpose of the four subcategories is is twofold. One is to store every level of menu that you select. Subcat 1 would store hardware. Subcat 2 would store peripherals. Subcat 3 would store other. Hard, subcat 1 and category are synchronized. So if you happen to uninstall the plugin at a later date, your category will still be hardware. Even though you've removed my plugin, you should still be able to report against the tickets where you selected the categories. The unfortunate bit is, of course, if you remove the plugin, then if you start selecting different categories for tickets after the subcategories have been set, they might get out of sync and might look a little weird if you happen to install the plugin again. Just a heads up, um, but just be assured that your actual original categories are intact. All right. Let's add this other option. We're going to log subcategory changes as private notes. Let's save. And let's go to a different ticket here. We'll go to ticket two. And set up help desk email support. Uh, boy. Well, we really don't have anything that really is specific to this. But we'll, hit, we'll hit other, and you'll see what happens here. Oh, we have to refresh the page. Sorry. We'll pick a different option. Copier. All right, and you see down below, subcategories change to ca hardware slash copier. Perfect. Awesome. All right, so we'll go back to our application. We'll go to settings. Uh, the XML, important note here. Okay, so like I said before, this XML structure has to be root, then category, then you can have other categories within categories if you like, and then you have items. Items are just single entities. Categories can contain other entries. Now you're going to see here, you have a couple options. You have um, show equals help desk, or down below we have one that says all. If you have one that says help desk, what this means is that if you go to the portal, like so, here, let's go, let's open up Chrome. I'm going to refresh this. You'll see we have our categories again. Minimize that. And you'll see we in here, you have this category called network, but it's not here anywhere. Well, that's because the user is not part of the help desk, so therefore they're not going to see the entry. You can do that with entire categories, or you can do that with sub items only. So if we say all here, and we decide, well, we don't want them to see slow performance, we'll hit save. Oops, we'll go to our portal. Sorry, guys. Refresh the page. And so basically, uh, what you see here now is that slow performance does not show up in here uh, because it's for um, help desk only. And the end user is hopefully not part of the help desk. So that's it. And so if they select a category here when they're creating their new ticket, you should see it pop up here. They can submit uh, you know, a description. And they have their category set. Network no con uh, connectivity. Submit the request. And you see we have category no network connectivity. This actually, this version that we're looking at here um, with the portal stuff, um, this is something new that I'm working on that actually is not in the 1.0 release. This, this particular feature is in the 1.1 release, which I'll probably be releasing very soon. Okay, and then now if we go into unassigned tickets, we refresh, there's our test ticket, there's our network no connectivity, it works like a charm, very good.